Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at some applications of the dot product. So let's just recall its definition. So if we have an n-dimensional vector a, a1 through an are its components, and an n-dimensional vector b, b1 through bn are its components, then a dot b is equal to a1 times b1 plus a2 times b2 all the way up to an times bn. So that's a scalar. In other words, the dot product of two vectors is just a number. Now, if theta is the angle between A and B, then the cosine of that angle can be described as the dot product of those two vectors divided by the product of the length of those two vectors. And finally, we have this rule that tells us when the vectors are perpendicular or orthogonal. So A is orthogonal to B if and only if a dot b is equal to zero. So this is a super important classification of orthogonal vectors. Okay, so we want to look at four examples here, and the first one is the following. So let's find all vectors <coughs> um, perpendicular to our given vector 3 minus 5. So in other words, we want to find vectors, maybe we'll call them v, and let's say that's equal to something with components v1 and v2, such that v dot 3 minus 5 equals 0, because remember the dot product classifies orthogonal vectors. Okay, so before we do that algebraically, let's just think about that um, geometrically. So notice if we have our coordinate axis like this, our vector 3 minus 5 is pointing in this direction. So this is our vector 3 minus 5. So notice we have infinitely many vectors that are orthogonal to this, and they all lie on this line right here. So our algebraic solution should also come up with infinitely many vectors that lie on a line like this. Okay, great. So now let's work it out algebraically. So we want to take v dot 3 minus 5, but we defined v component-wise by v1, v2. So we have v1 comma v2 dot 3 minus 5 equals 0. But then by the definition of the dot product, that gives us 3v1 minus 5v2 equals 0. In other words, v1 equals 5 thirds v2. So we've got a relationship between v1 and v2. But now notice v2 can be anything. It can be any real number, and that will still give us something that's orthogonal to 3 minus 5. So maybe we could write this uh, as follows. So we need a vector that is... Um, three, sorry, five over three uh, times t, comma t. So here I've just set t equal to v2, so we have some sort of other parameter. So notice if v2 equals t, that means the second component is t, but then the first component is five thirds times the second component, which is that right here. And so this is where t is any real number. So now maybe we want to check that this is indeed uh, orthogonal to our original vector. So we can do 5 thirds t comma t dot 3 minus 5. Good. And notice that's going to give us 5t minus 5t equals 0 which makes it orthogonal. And I should point out here that we actually don't want t to be any real number. We want uh, t to be any real number except for zero. Because uh, the zero vector, we don't really like to think of that as being orthogonal to any given vector. Okay, good. I'll clean up the board, and then we're going to do another example. Okay, so here we have another pretty similar example. So we want to find real numbers alpha so that this vector 2i plus 3j is orthogonal to 6i plus alpha j. So let's just recall that we can write 2i plus 3j component-wise as 2 comma 3, and we can write 6i plus alpha j component-wise as 6 comma alpha. 
And so in order for those to be orthogonal, we want to use this classification so their dot product has to be equal to zero. So in other words, we want to find alpha such that 2 comma 3 dot 6 comma alpha equals zero. Okay, good, but then by the definition of the dot product, this becomes 2 times 6, which is 12, plus 3 alpha, 3 times alpha equals 0, but then it's not too hard to see that this means 3 alpha equals minus 12, which means alpha equals minus 4. So we have a value for alpha. Okay, good. I'll clean up the board, and we'll go and move on to another example. Okay, so now moving into three dimensions, we want to find all vectors that are orthogonal to one, one, zero. So I've done a little sketch up here to kind of see what's going on. So let's assume that this vector is one, one, zero. So notice it may not be pointing in that direction depending on how you look at the coordinate axes, but this is just a sketch up so it doesn't really matter. And notice that there are lots of vectors that are orthogonal to 1, 1, 0, and in fact they form a plane in three-dimensional space, which I've drawn in orange here. So notice we could have one on this plane pointing that way, we could have one pointing that way, we could have one pointing back that way, and so on and so forth. And since a plane is two-dimensional, we should have two degrees of freedom in this case um, in parallel to what we had last time which was one degree of freedom when our orthogonal vectors made up a line. Okay, so here's what we want to do. We want to find some rules for x, y, and z such that 1, 1, 0 dot x comma y comma z equals 0 because that's the classification for orthogonal vectors. Now using the definition of the dot product, that means x plus y equals zero. But notice there's no mention of z, so we will say that z is some sort of free variable. Good. And then notice here, this allows us to write y as, or maybe this allows us to write x as minus y. And so x is restricted by y, but y itself is not restricted, so we could say y is also a free variable. So now if we put this back into our vector, so we get all vectors of this form, so they are minus y, comma y, comma z. So remember, z was free, y was free, and then x had to be negative the y component. But now notice we can write this as a linear combination, y times negative 1, 1, 0, plus z times 0, 0, 1. And if you've had something, some class in linear algebra or something, you might write this as the span of two vectors, but since this isn't that type of class, we can just leave it right here. Okay, I'll clean up the board, then we'll do one more example. Okay, so for our last example, we'll look at the following. So let's let A be the point 1, 1, B be 3, 5, and C be negative 1, 4, and our goal is to find the angle measures of uh, the angles in triangle A, B, C. So let's do a picture here. Okay, so notice A is at this point right here, so that's 1, 1. So B is 3, 5, so 1, 2, 3, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's B up here. And then C is negative 1, so that would be back here, and then 4. So that's up here. Okay, so there's C. Okay, so notice that nicely com completes into a triangle like this. And let's say we can label these uh, angles alpha, um, maybe this one is beta, and then this one is gamma. Okay, so but notice alpha is the angle between AC and BC, right? So we could write that down. So alpha is equal to the angle between um, vector AC and vector um, AB. Good, and then beta is the angle between vector BA and BC. So here we could have BA and BC. 
And then finally, gamma is the angle between vector CA and CB. So CA and CB. Great. But we know how to find the cosine of these angles by this formula right here. Then we can just take the inverse cosine function and we'll have the values. Okay, so let's see what we get. So notice we have cosine of alpha is going to be equal to, so that, that will be equal to vector AC dot vector AB over the length of AC um, times the length of AB. Okay, good. But now we can find the vector AC by taking the difference of these two points. So notice that's going to give us, um, so this, com this component minus this component, so that'll give us negative two. And then this component minus this component, so that'll give us three. And then we have dot AB, so that'll be 3 minus 1, so that's 2, and 5 minus 1, which is 4. Okay, so those are our two vectors, and then we need to find the length of those vectors. So we'll use the formula that the length of a vector is the square root of the sum of the squares of its components. So that's going to be the length of AC will be the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared. So that's 4 plus 9, which is 13. Good. And then the length of AB will be the square root of 2 squared plus 4 squared, so that'll be 4 plus 16, which is the square root of 20. Okay, good. But that is going to leave us with the cosine of alpha equals, so we can take this dot product. We have negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4, and 3 times uh, 4, which is 12. So we have 12 minus 4, so we have 8 over, so the square root of 13 times the square root of 20, so that's going to be the square root of 260. So that's the cosine of our angle, but that tells us that alpha equals the inverse cosine of this quantity. So we have 8 over the square root of 260, and we're going to want to take a quantity between 0 and um, pi, or 0 and 180 degrees. So um, I won't calculate that out in numbers, but notice that uh, you could just plug it into a calculator or something and get that very quickly. And also, I won't calculate the cosine of alpha, sorry, of beta or gamma because they follow exactly equivalent to, equivalently to this strategy. Okay, that's the end of this video.